Jesus, you are worthy. Mountains are still being moved, and strongholds are still being loose. God, we believe, yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do, and bodies are still being raised, and giants are still being slain. God, we believe, yes, we can see it, the wonders are still what you do. We are here for you, come and do.
I'm not waiting 
desperate for more of you. We're still hungry for more of you. Father, we linger in your presence this morning. I pray that your Holy Spirit would just continue to move throughout this room. Jesus, if we haven't already, I pray that every single person in this room would just be able to set everything at your feet this morning. Their wins, their losses, their heartache, we set it at your feet this morning. And we choose to give you praise. We choose to give you thanks. We choose to to bask in your freedom this morning. God, I pray that that, your, your grace, your love, your freedom would just be the refreshing that we need. I pray that it would just begin to fill us, that it would spill out of us into those around us. Jesus, that we would just be so full of your love and of your joy, Lord Jesus. Jesus, we sing your praise this morning. There is no one like you. Jesus. There's a calm that covers me when I kneel down at your feet. It's a place of healing. It's a place where I find freedom. Thank you, Jesus. There's a place my eyes can't see where my spirit longs to be it's a place of healing it's a place I live in freedom why don't you lift your hands and worship right now I'm going my hands so I can reach that I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down I've come to worship I've come to worship and there's a love that lives in to a place of freedom. Oh, we're gonna lift our hands. I'm gonna lift my hands so I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down. I come to worship. I come to worship. 
church so I can reach heaven. I'm gonna shout your name till the walls come falling down. I've come to worship. I've come to worship. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing my song like a Jesus, we give you all the praise this morning. Father, we thank you for your freedom that you have given us. God, we thank you that one day we will stand in eternity with you, worshiping you in your presence face to face, forever enjoying your love and your grace and your freedom. Jesus, we are so undeserving, but yet you see us and you call out to us and you love us. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. Father, I pray that you would just continue to speak to our hearts today, that you would speak through the missionary. God, that we would hear your heart, your heart as a father this morning, Jesus. And it is in your holy and powerful name we pray today. Amen. Isn't God good, church? Yes. We are so excited to have you guys with us this morning at Connection Church. Why don't you take a few minutes right now and say hello to the people around you.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. Why don't you guys go ahead and head back to your seats. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen? Amen. I'm going to just lead you through a couple of the things in your bulletin. Hopefully you got one of these on the way in. But uh, we just want to draw your attention to a couple that are on here. Uh, let's see. On the inside, hey, we have uh, Easter's coming up. How many of you guys love Easter? Easter's tons of fun. We love, we love Easter. Our kids definitely love Easter because they get to do an Easter egg hunt and all that. We didn't get to do it last year, but we're excited to do it this year. But here's the deal. We need your help with the candy uh, because we don't want to, we don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars buying the candy. So we ask you guys to help us with this. So you guys can uh, uh, grab a, grab a bag or two, whatever you want to, and bring it in. Uh, let's see, by, well, certainly uh, by April 4th, since I believe that is Easter. So we're going to need a before for that. Uh, when's it? Da, 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 da. March 28th. Okay, bring the donation in by March 28th. And that way we can get all those Easter eggs stuffed with candy and we can just give a nice memorable morning uh, to our kids. And certainly if you have little ones, uh, that are part of our kids' ministry, I want you to encourage them to invite a friend along that day. And maybe you can reach out to a parent and say, uh, we have something special for your kids that morning. They're going to have a good time. Let's use that as a chance to plant seeds for the gospel. Amen? Amen. That, that's what it's about. It's not just about sugaring up our children, you know, <laughs> like that's, we do that, but it's uh, it's got a bigger vision than that. So uh, we also have on April 2nd, the Dwell Night of Worship. We love those. We love to worship here at Connection Church, don't we? Oh, Oh, it's so good. I, I love it. We have an amazing worship team. And that night is, is a nothing but worship. Starts at 7, lasts till a little after 8 typically, and it's just a night of worship. It's one of my favorite times of the year. Friday, April 2nd, make sure to be there for that. And then, let's see what's on the back here. Easter series coming up. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, bowling. Oh, bowling, so much fun. How many of you guys like to bowl? Let me see your hands. You love bowling. Okay, you're my people. I love bowling. Bowling's so much fun. On March 21st from 6 to 9, we do this all church event. We'll be out there. It only costs 3 bucks a person or 10 bucks for the whole family, so a good deal. If money is a problem and you're like, oh, I would love to go, but I just don't have that kind of money, uh, just come anyway, right? We'll cover you. We'll, we'll get you in. I don't want anybody to not be a part just because of the money. So just, just come anyway. It'll be okay. Those of us, uh, if you you know, if you can afford it, then that'll help offset the price. That's great too. But if not, be there. We want everybody to be a part of that on the 21st. And our countdown to completion, we're setting it looks like, man, that small font, Woo, 73, 73,000. That's pretty good. We're, we're marching our way towards debt free. Excited about that every week. And as, uh, as we speak about money, let's go ahead and get our ushers in place. We're going to collect our offering today. As always, we want to make sure we're being faithful uh, to our tithes and our offerings as we want to continue to push this church forward into all the things that God has planned. Uh, we're going to come back later on in our gathering after the message and collect those little, those little faith promise cards. You should have got one on, on the way in in that bulletin. Uh, that's something that we do uh, every uh, twice a year, actually. We collect our faith promise cards. But we're not going to put those in right now. You can hold on to that. We'll take that up later for missions. Uh, right now, this is our giving for tithes and offerings, and uh, as well as our free to dream, as well as missions, it's all going in together. So let's bow our heads, and let's pray God's blessing as we honor him. Lord, I just, uh, I ask right now that you would help us to be faithful. Uh, this is a very telling moment for us because when we worship you with song and with our voice, uh, that's kind of easy. It doesn't really cost us much of anything. But in this moment, uh, we got to lay something on the line. It costs us. Lord, certainly every, every cent that is given could be spent on something else. And Lord, you know that. You know it could go to other needs we have in our life. And so what we do right now is an act of worship. We are declaring Jesus, that our trust is in you, that you're our provider, that even though we have other things that are screaming for our attention and that need money given towards it, we're going to say, Lord, we, we honor you first. So I pray that you would bless this money that's given and that you would multiply it for use in your kingdom. And we pray it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. 
All right. Well, as the ushers come around and collect that, let me let me go ahead and introduce to you guys our our guest today. This is the second week of our two week uh, mission focus here for the spring, and uh, we are we are always honored to have missionaries with us. They are investing their life and in spread of the gospel, and so we need to make sure that we uh, give opportunity for you guys to hear from them. These are our missionaries. We support these uh, on a monthly basis. You see them on our wall back there in the in the fellowship hall, and I thank you for your continued support of our missionaries. But today, we get to hear from Kyle and Brittany McAllister. Matter of fact, why don't you guys go ahead and come up. They are missionaries to Ohio University. Am I saying it right? Ohio University? Not University of Ohio. I get confused sometimes. In the way. So Ohio University, and uh, they're just going to share with us about what the Lord has been doing. So uh, would you give them a hand today? Good morning. Hey. May a hunger for God <laughs> rise up in this place this morning. Lord, I pray that your word uh, would be done, that your will would be done this morning, uh, just like it is in heaven. Yes, sir, and on the double. In the name of Jesus, amen. Pastor Tom got it right. I'm Kyle. This is Brittany. You can call us Kyle and Brittany. <laughs> Uh, and we've been here before. We really like you guys. And I was telling Connie, it's so nice to be in such a friendly place. And uh, it makes it more enjoyable for us. But it just means that we can meet more of you guys. And since we've been here before, you guys know us a little bit. Uh, we're going to try and share different stuff this morning so you can get to know us better. And so we don't disappoint Mike. Uh, <laughs> he's expecting some good. <laughs> uh, so uh, in light of that, uh, Brittany's going to share our engagement story this morning. Yeah. Real quick, too, this is important for later, but on your seat, there should have, could have been little, uh, we're calling them paracord loops. Can you hold those up and wave them so I know you have them? If you don't have one and there's a seat next to you that has it, snag it. It's very important to what we're going to be talking about. We need everyone that could have a loop, have a loop. Does that make sense? All the loops need a home, is all we're saying. <laughs> Adopt a loop today, okay? <laughs> So we do want to share with you, uh, what do they say on those TV shows when there's something about to be really dangerous and then they say, you know, don't do this at home? Yeah. I would like to put that on a disclaimer of our engagement story. So <laughs> uh, I was in Costa Rica doing a, I was at Sinsau, which is a language school. And I was just doing my quiet time. Young people, read your Bibles. I was doing my quiet time, just reading, and I felt like the Lord jumped off the page and, in short, told me that I was going to marry Kyle, who I wasn't dating, that I was going to be a Kyle missionary, and that I was going to be living near or closer to my family versus Costa Rica. At that same time, like within days, the Lord was speaking to Kyle, and uh, Kyle, in a quiet time as well, felt like the Lord spoke to him and said, Kyle, for you, Mexico is where I'm moving. And Kyle knew that he was going to be spending at least a year of his life in Mexico. And then the Lord was like, and by the way, Brittany's where I'm moving too. So Kyle knew that he was going to marry me, okay? So he goes out and he buys a ring. Mind you, we're not dating. <laughs> and I'm in Costa Rica. I was in Costa Rica long enough that the... Uh, what do you call that? The uh, insurance or whatever. The like, he had 30 days to like change his mind. That, yeah, that came and went while I was still in Costa Rica. And so I get home for a friend's wedding, and I'm just making these like hangout dates with some friends, and I happen to make one with him. And uh, he was like, you know what? Can I have like a whole afternoon? And I was like, okay, like I'm gonna marry you anyways. Let's do this. So. <laughs> This is how I talk to myself in my head. Uh, <laughs> and so he picks me up. He takes me to this park that he would go and do quiet times often at. And I was like, this is sweet. He's sharing an intimate thing with me. And um, we get there. I like geese. I think geese are the funniest things because geese will stop traffic. Like, <laughs> you can't hit a goose. Like, they're just so funny. He thought I liked them enough that I wanted to feed them, which is sweet. I don't actually want to feed them. I just think they're funny. So he brought bread. And we, um, so when we got to the park, he's like, hey, I was kind of hoping that we could call this our first date. And I was like, that's awesome. So we went and fed the geese. And then he held my hand, which was, like, really awkward. 
our arms are at the wrong length. And so. <laughs> I think we were too close together. Something. So it was like, you go up and I go down. I mean, the Lord spoke, but when we were holding hands, I was thinking, Lord, are you sure? Like, <laughs> I'm supposed to marry this man. I can't hold his hand. So long story short, he walks me through this really cool, like, um, these, like, trees that had, like, overgrown. And, like, we walked through this. It was very, like, a romantic movie. It was amazing. Secret spot. Super sweet good secret. It was awesome. He sits me down. He's telling me like how wonderful I am and lovely and all this stuff. And then he pulls out this ring and proposes on our first date. No joke. It, I, I checked my watch. It was 45 minutes in. So we dated for 45 minutes before getting engaged. And I, I dare somebody to top that. <laughs> And I'm sure, I mean, obviously we got married, you know what I said, but I'm sure you're wondering, how did I react? Did I cry? No, I laughed. No joke. Instead of saying yes. <laughs> yeah, I laughed because like the Lord spoke. The Lord told me I was going to marry him and I wanted to marry him. We knew him. We knew each other for two years. This is what I wanted. I laughed because of how good God was. He told me, just wait. And I'm horrible at waiting. And I thought he meant like, wait till he graduates, wait a couple years. Like I, I would have waited as long as it took, but it took two months. And, and I laughed because I was just like overwhelmed by how good God was. Cause when he comes through, it's, it's beautiful. So I always wanted to share that with you. Truly, thank you. So uh, believe it or not, the story doesn't end there. Uh, we, have been married for 11 years now, and we actually have three kids. So, and I, we have a picture of them. Oh, well, that's our whole family, yep. But we have another picture. Oh, they're so cute. So, uh, Abigail is our oldest, and she is seven, uh, teen. No. At heart. Seven. Seven. Um, and she is very theatrical. And so if she were here, they're with my parents right now, uh, if they were here, she would, you know, be up front during worship and very dramatic worship and stuff. Asher, he's six, and he is the fuzziest stubborn person I know. Uh, so you can't see under his hair. We say he has a fuzzy head and a big heart, uh, but he, he will dig his heels in and not do anything he doesn't want to do. And then Josie... Uh, Josie's the easy one. <laughs> She's four, right? Wow. This is the best four years ever. <laughs> She's just so, so, so good and even tempered. And I mean, she's got a streak in her, but she's so, so easy to handle. And you, you will love her. Uh, and they're with my parents right now. Uh, the pandemic has been rough on us and they're about to go back into school full time. And so we want to make sure that they have a good reentry. And so we didn't want to overtax them. So spending time with Papa and Gigi is what they need. Um, so that's, uh, that's our family. Uh, and that's a large part certainly of who we are, but woven into that is what God has done in us. Um, and what ha God has us doing is Chi Alpha and Chi Alpha is a uh, university ministry. We are the Assemblies of God outreach to secular university and college campuses in the U.S. and abroad. Um, and I mean, we, we did spend a year in Mexico, like the Lord had said, um, and then we went through Kyle for internships and we moved every year for the first six years of our marriage and finally have settled at Ohio University in Athens, where we've been for six years now. Is it six or is it seven officially? Six years. Um, but we like to say it's on our sign. We like to say we're a family of friends following Jesus in the everyday stuff of life. Um, that's how we function on campuses is like a family, um, not blood, just friends. And uh, it is our passion to mentor students in following Jesus in the everyday stuff of life, not high holy church stuff, but just the normal stuff of when, how to prioritize Jesus when you have a test coming up or how do you decide what to give and when and how, how often, all that kind of stuff. Just the little things that you need to know that ultimately build a life that follows Jesus. And so uh, that's what we've been doing. We do uh, Bible studies and we mentor students one-on-one. -on -one. We teach them all the stuff, we teach them life stuff, like how to know what your credit score is. And we teach them Jesus stuff, like how to hear the voice of God and uh, treat people the way that Jesus treated people, et cetera. Um, sometimes we function as surrogate parents at times. Um, and so this is what we do. 
uh, we don't, we're not whacking back the jungle like some missionaries do, uh, but we do have students come and live in our home. We had a student live in our home for two years uh, while he was getting on his feet. And uh, this is how we follow Jesus and teach students to do that as well. College ministry is what we love. It is our, both our passion and our burden. Um, it's our passion uh, because it's such a strategic mission field. Um, the way that other countries send their future leaders to our campuses, um, every level of society is represented there and can be reached with the gospel and, and will eventually go back to where they came from and can spread the gospel there as well. Um, it is the fulcrum that our society sits on. And so we feel so honored to minister there, but it's also a burden um, because this is where uh, the church is, is hemorrhaging the body of Christ uh, in droves and uh, that hurts our heart because we know it hurts God's heart. And so uh, we often tell people that uh, for a student coming to college professing faith, um, they are, there's a, an 80% chance that they will walk away from the Lord by the time they graduate, which is totally unacceptable to us. Um, but we wanted to elaborate what that means and what that looks like for you guys today. And so Brittany's going to walk us through that. Thanks. So everyone have your little prayer cord loops? Okay. Let's imagine together that we are a college university. Okay, our university happens to have 24,000 students, but in this university, we're going to work with the number 100. That's how many cords we have. So out of a group of 100, Right. So if you don't have a paracord, you're not in this university. I'm sorry. You're, you're a parent who has sent the person sitting next to you to school. <laughs> okay. Imagine with me. Okay. So often we say 80% walk away. This group is actually broken up into three different subgroups. So it's not just all of them walk away from faith. Okay. You have the prodigals. This is one out of nine young people. Okay. So if you have a pink paracord, if you could please stand up. Stand, stand up. Oh, yeah. You're willing and able. Yeah. So of, of our community, this is how many people are actual prodigals. Where they grew up in church <laughs> okay so uh they grew up with a christian background but they've lost their faith in christianity this group is described by research as prodigals in essence these prodigals say they've lost their faith after being a christian at some point in their past you can go ahead and sit down so this is our friend reuben Reuben grew up in church. He had a really good relationship with his grandfather, actually, who's the person that really poured into him um, a faith in Jesus. And then when his grandfather passed away, his grandfather was his tie to church. And so he would even hear songs that reminded him of his grandfather, and he would just break down crying. We tried to take him to church with us one time, and they happened to play a song that was played at his grandfather's funeral, and he, like, walked out of the church. Uh, Reuben had a unhealthy family dynamic that um, kind of had this like, prove to me, God, that you're real um, and that God doesn't make much of a difference and began to see religion as outdated and a mere preference. And so when he came to college, he wanted nothing to do with Jesus. He happened to have a friend who was connected to Chi Alpha that for two years kept like, Reuben, come with me, Reuben, come with me. And he would come to things and uh, would experience God's presence, but almost like as, as an aversion, he would like run out. <laughs> uh, I'm happy to report that after two years, Reuben did finally profess faith in Jesus. He didn't remain a prodigal, but he did come to campus as a prodigal. So that's a prodigal. If you have the green band, could you stand up for us? These are what we're going to call nomads. Teal, you know, Kyle calls it green. I'm going to go teal. If it's not pink or orange, it's green. <laughs> would you say it's teal? Yeah, I, I would okay. say it's teal. You wrote green. Anyways, semantics. <laughs> 11 years? <laughs> okay, so these are considered nomads, Okay nomads. These are young Christians wandering away from institutional church. So uh, roughly four out of ten young Christians fall into this category. They still call themselves Christian, but they are far less active in church than they were during high school. 
nomads had become lost to church participation. Thank you for participating. You may sit down. And, and this is the biggest chunk. And so these people know about Jesus. They, they just don't, they're just not involved anymore in a, in a church or any sort of church function. This is our friend Miguel. So Miguel has come to us because his girlfriend brought him. <laughs> <laughs> and Miguel would say he's a Christian, but he's not really active in anything. He wouldn't stand up for Jesus for anything, and he's only coming because his girlfriend's bringing him. Now, if I could take a, what is this, a sidebar? If I could just say, I came to faith because some random stranger walked up to me and shared the gospel with me, and I thought he was cute, and he invited me to Chi Alpha, and I said, sure, why not? I absolutely love what you guys have done upstairs with your youth thing. Absolutely. I love it. I think it's incredible. If I were a youth person and I came to this, I know that sounds so old. <laughs> if I was a young folk, <laughs> I'm really, everyone who's really young, I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm, I'm just adding to the offense. So if I could just stop. <laughs> if, if I came to this church, I would keep coming because of that. So all of you who approved that and gave money for it, Yes, yes. People will come because of an invitation, because it was fun, because some cute guy invited them. They will come, and especially this church, they will experience God's presence, and then they will stay. So can I just affirm every decision that you guys have made and involve, like, updating your church and all this stuff, it is going to work. It's going to work, and people will come to know Jesus. He would like to add something. <laughs> So we have the picture of a sheep. Uh, sheep often wander off, not on purpose, but they're just munch, munching along. Uh, and so some, some nomads don't, don't know how far they've wandered uh, from the faith. They, they still believe all the same things maybe that they believed, but their life does not reflect it. Um, and so they, without knowing it, they stop living the life that God would have them live to live their own way, though they haven't forsaken their beliefs. And so. Um, for us, it's a very difficult demographic to reach because they don't believe that they need it. Um, and so part of it is befriending and getting them uh, to belong. And then we can kind of guide them back to where the rest of the fold lives. Um, and we're hoping that it will work out that way for Miguel. Yeah. So Miguel is kind of still stuck where he's at. And so I know that you guys wouldn't mind us praying for him. So I'm just going to invite you into that. <laughs> so I'd like us to pray for Miguel and for him to, to really catch on fire for Jesus. So if you could bow your, your heads. Father God, I know that your presence is here. And I know that there are so many people here who passionately love you. And God, I pray that for Miguel. I pray that he wouldn't just wear a name tag that says I'm a Christian, that he wouldn't just fill in a bubble for census purposes at times. God, but I pray that, that Miguel would uh, experience your presence in a, in a new and fresh way. God, that his relationship with you would be because of, of you guys and not because of his girlfriend or any other outside influences. God, I pray that he would uh, surrender his life fully to you and not just the parts that are comfortable, but even the parts that are uncomfortable. God, would he come to a saving knowledge of who you are. We love you, Jesus. Amen. Thanks for praying for our friend Miguel. So the other one would be the orange. Who has the, the orange paracord loop? Go ahead and stand up. <laughs> so this one, this one's interesting. This one's the exile. <laughs> Always the pastors, but for real. <laughs> Wait until I explain this. Okay. So two out of 10 are catalyzed as exiles. Those who feel lost between church culture and the society they feel called to influence. Let me explain. Exiles feel they, it's a, I want to find a way to follow Jesus that connects with the world that I live in. And I want to be a Christian without separating myself from the world around me. I feel stuck between the comfortable faith of my parents and a life I believe God wants me to live. It is the uh, disdain for playing church, but don't know where they fit. There's this radical, I know that God's calling me to do something really amazing, and I, I, I don't want to offend the culture that I'm around that I'm supposed to be reaching, but I don't know how to reach them because my church doesn't know how to equip me. They're caught between two worlds. 
And so what ultimately happens, if you take a coal and it's in the fire and it's on fire and it's doing awesome, if you take that coal outside of the fire, eventually it goes out. And that's what happens to us. If we don't remain in the body of Christ and we separate ourselves, eventually we die out and the fire is gone. And so an exile gets confused of like, I don't know where to go and where I belong and how do I obey God, but how do I not offend others and all this stuff? And eventually their fire dies out. You guys can sit down. This reminds us of our friend Austin. Uh, if you happen to know, it's not the Austin that lived with us, it's a different Austin popular name. So Austin Dempsey uh, generally had a heart to follow God, and he really wanted to do something with his faith. He just didn't know what. And so Kyle was able to walk him through, like, what is God calling to do? And how do, how do you walk that out? And so Austin actually ended up taking a semester off of school to go work with YWAM to fulfill that missionary heart that he had. How cool is that? Like, who else takes a semester off of school to go and share the gospel with people? Incredible. He was an exile that actually found his place, which is good. Yep, he would also add to that. <laughs> uh, so this type of student, uh, they're very zealous and they have a lot of ideas. Uh, sometimes we say they're so heavenly minded, they're no earthly good. Um, so it's like, I want to give all my money to the poor and I want to live with nothing. And we kind of have to help those students walk it back of like, okay, well, we need to find out exactly what God is calling you to do instead of doing just everything that you can think of. Uh, they talk a lot about social justice. Um, the LGBTQ stuff is very important to them. They feel uh, led to reach out to those people, um, but they feel like they have to choose between uh, the, the church lifestyle and the total opposite. Um, when it comes to certain things. And so then uh, they find their place nowhere and eventually it dies off altogether. Um, so part of that 80%, so everybody who stood up, those would be people that the church would never see again. And so they have fallen away from the faith, but, uh, but it's not necessarily because they all changed their mind about Jesus. And so we see a huge opportunity to step into that and begin to meet the needs of helping the nomads understand that they're walking away even if they don't notice or the exiles find a place and channel their their zeal for God into a place that really builds his kingdom. So all the people that have stood up, all of this is just Christians. Christians who have grown up in the youth group who you guys have spent millions of dollars investing in that you're sending off with a hope and a prayer and they land on a college campus. And if they don't run into someone, this is what happens to them. What about the people who've never grown up in a church? How many people are like that on a college campus? I'm so glad you asked. So that number, I don't have a paracord for you. Okay. 30 years ago, the amount of students that would walk onto a college campus that had no church background at all was 10%. Fast forward 30 years, now it's 31%. It has grown that much in 30 years. And that's where Kyle and I fall. We had absolutely no church background. And then we hit the college campus and someone led us to Jesus. Kyle came two weeks before campus, but still. And it was because someone stepped out and discipled us into knowing who Jesus is. This is why it's so important to reach college campuses. Because either they're going to walk away, they're going to be eaten by wolves, or they're, they just don't know until someone tells them. <laughs> um, with all that so that's our burden that's what we feel that's why we we must be on campus it, this is our this is the first church that we've spoken at in probably a year because of covid and stuff but it's not like we've we've just put our our call on hold and put our the the burden that god has put inside us on hold um but it but it burns inside us and so as things begin to open up it's a relief to us um, to be able to do more and interact with students more um, with as, as much of that burden as we feel. Um, when we came to campus six years ago, uh, God spoke through Isaiah 49, 6 to me. And I think we might even shared this last time we were here. Um, but it says, uh, it is too light a thing for you to be my servant, to restore the tribes of Jacob and to bring back those of Israel I have kept. I will also, I will also make you a light for the Gentiles that my salvation may reach the ends of the earth. And so as he spoke that to me, I understood what he was saying was, OU is huge, it's 20, 24,000 students, it's still too small. 
Um, that's not why I put you there to just reach the campus, that his intention for us is to reach the nations. And so as we are raising up students to know God and his ways, mentoring them in the everyday stuff of life, that we would develop in them a missionary heart, a missionary, that, a missionary in the sense of being committed to the Great Commission, having that be their passion, whether they go or, or contribute in other ways. And so that is why we exist on campus. And uh, we, we see ourselves succeeding when students talk about the Great Commission like we do, where I just can't not do it. I must. I have to be involved somehow. And so we wanted to pitch that to you guys today. I love that you guys are doing the Easter outreach. And like, like what Pastor Tom said, it's not just buying candy. It's not just souping people up with sugar and then sending them home. But it's, it's reaching, it is planting seeds, it really is. And so whenever you do something and you're thinking, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Every time you go to worship practice and it's like, it's not that big of a deal. When you're reaching out to the youth, when you're doing like kids ministry and stuff like that, like, does this really matter? You can look back on this verse and say, it's too light a thing to think that this little thing is all that I'm working on. You're investing in the next generation who's going to eventually rise up and be the next generation of missionaries and campus missionaries. It's too little to think that you're just investing in your church. You're doing more than that. You're doing an amazing job reaching your church and you're reaching people around the world with your missions giving. It's amazing. Do any of you guys, have, have any of you guys ever seen the TV show Treehouse Detectives? Please, I just need one person. It is a little kid's show. Does anyone know? Treehouse Detectives on Netflix? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, you're gonna get this. This is for you, okay? <laughs> so there's a show, it's called Treehouse Detectives. <laughs> My kids loved it. Do you know it? No. Oh. That's why they're laughing. Okay, if you, if you still have Netflix, go home and look it up. Treehouse Detectives. No, it's a kid's show, it's a cartoon. So there's this like brother and sister bear who are like detectives and like they're really cute. Uh, they have this like script that they go through every time and at, like when they decide they're going to do this mission, Brother Bear looks at Sister and says, Sister, there's a lot at stake. And Sister Bear looks at Brother Bear and says, Brother, there always is. And that's what I feel about this. <laughs> I know, it will connect. Full circle. Full circle. There is a lot at stake. There is, there always is. It's not just candy, it's not just these little outreaches, it's the salvation of a loved one. It really is. So we invite our students to join in the Great Commission by Go Give, Pray, Welcome. Well, that was a little delayed. That's okay. That's it, that's it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Okay. So we invite our students to Go Give, Pray, Welcome. Every student can go. Our, our desire is that every student will go on an overseas mission trip at least one time when they're with us. They can give to missions, even college students can give to missions, but it's not even just the monthly giving, but it's the picking up someone else's lunch while they're out. It's the, the being generous with what they have. Pray, everybody can pray. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Welcome, this is good. This is like inviting people over for dinner and inviting them into your family. It sounds really good until you try it. And then you're like, I don't know, just, it is, it's, it's hard. It's hard to let people into your, your life and uh, into your home. And yeah, a lot of insecurities can come up. But this is what we invite our students to. And this is what we want to invite you guys into. We invite you to go. We invite you to go into your workplaces and into your classrooms and into the people, into your neighborhoods. Go. Go and share the gospel. Go and tell them your story. It is really easy to share your testimony. What were you like before Jesus? What did he do? How did he step in? And what do you like now? They, they might be able to fight with your theology, but they can't fight with what God's done in you. So go, share your story. They really, they really don't hate you because of your story. Please don't be intimidated. We invite you to give. Thank you, genuinely, thank you so much for giving to our family. Thank you for your faith promises. Our job is hard and knowing that we have your support really does mean something. The faith promises are important because it helps your pastors and your board know how much they can support missions. And not only can they support them, but can they up it? And can they pick up another missionary? 
So what you do and how you give makes a difference. It's incredible. Thank you so much for your generosity. We invite you to pray. Please pray for Miguel. <laughs> Please pray for our family. Please pray for our son, Asher. He's, he's in kindergarten, have a really hard time. Kyle literally had to pick him up last week, kicking and screaming, and push him into the building because COVID has been bad. It's been bad for our family. Please pray for our campuses. Please pray for those who are around you. Please pray for your family. We give you these cords to demonstrate what it's like, but then also to, as a reminder, put them on your key rings, put them on your book bags. It's a reminder to pray for us and pray for those around you. And then we invite you to welcome. There will be a day where there will be no COVID. Hallelujah. Invite people into your home. Invite them over for a dinner. Invite them into your church family. Invite them and welcome, welcome them into what you're already doing. People need a home. They need friends. And you can do that. So we do want you guys to keep the, the paracord loops and and pray for a prodigal, pray for an exile, pray for a nomad, um, pray for us, pray for the campus, uh, pray for the Easter outreach. It's just a reminder to pray. Um, and I'd like to pray now, if we could. God, we want hunger to rise up. We want a thirst for your righteousness. Jesus, we wanna see the Great Commission finished so you can return and, and set all things right that we can be with you where you are. God, it's been, it's been a, a hard year, but you have not stopped and you will not stop. There's nothing that can stop you. There is no height or depth, angel or demon, no pandemic that can stop you or separate your people from you and your power. God, we throw ourselves at your feet saying, Yes, Lord. God, would you help us with yes, Lord. God, we commit uh, the rest of today. We commit the rest of this week, the rest of our time on earth to saying yes, Lord. In the powerful name of Jesus, amen. Would you give Kyle and Brittany a hand? Thank you guys so much for coming, speaking, challenging us. Yeah, you guys can go ahead. Appreciate you guys. What a great, what a great reminder of the type of people that are, by the way, not just on college campuses. Do you realize all those, all those same categories are the ones filling, uh, filling Walmart and walking around in the, in the stores and at your workplace and all the, I mean, it's the same stuff. And so we need to make sure that uh, we have that in mind as we're reaching out to people. It is an awesome responsibility that we have, um, but it's, uh, it's, it's not just a challenge, it's so rewarding as we participate with the Great Commission. I love opportunities to share our faith, I love opportunities to do what God has called us to do, and uh, certainly one of those things, as we've been talking about for the last multiple weeks, is giving to missions. And so would you take out that little faith promise card that you have, uh, hold that in your hand right now, so I want you to take a look at it. Uh, these are, are cards that should look very familiar to you since we use them all the time. Uh, I know some of you, uh, you, you fill one out every time. Others of you, you don't. You just keep giving, you know, and that's, and that's great too. But it does help us in our planning, and it helps us do what the Lord calls us to. And so what we, what we try to do here is give you an opportunity in, in both the spring, which is what we call right now, uh, and then also in the fall. So in six-month sets, we give you an opportunity to make a faith promise or a pledge um, because sometimes financial uh, situations change and a whole year commitment can be a little bit difficult. So we do them uh, as often as we can for that. And so I'm just asking that you would, uh, hopefully you've already prayed about it, and this isn't the first moment you're thinking about this, but that you go ahead and mark what you're willing to do for missions and uh, as, we, as we close this morning uh, in a word of prayer here in a moment, I'm not going to have the ushers come back around. We're, gonna, we're just going to have you bring those cards up and, and set them up here on the steps. We, you know, we say up on the altar. All right, so you're just going to set them up here. And we're going to believe that the Lord is going to take these faith promises and do amazing things through them. It's, again, it's not just random money we're, th we're, we're throwing out there. It represents lives. It represents the gospel being, being shared 
on Ohio University's campus, uh, in Costa Rica, like we heard from the strangest last week, and so many other missionaries. It really does represent the gospel being spread all around the world, but we have to be faithful. And I know that it's challenging. Uh, it's challenging for me every time as well. I've told you this before. I'll say it again. I always try to, I always try to increase it just a little bit. There are times where it comes around, I, I just increase my, my faith promise by a dollar. You know, it, it's not always these big leaps and bounds, but, but I just try to say, Lord, what can I do? Let me just do a little more. Let me keep pushing myself. Let me keep doing all that I can. I know one thing for sure. When I, when I breathe my last and, uh, and I stand before the Lord in heaven, I don't think I'm going to regret the money I gave the missions. That's, that's just the way it goes. I'm going to be happy for every single dollar that I gave. And chances are I'm probably going to be kicking myself. I didn't give a little bit more. And so I think that's just something that as we come to moments like this, let's live open-handed. Let's make sure that we're doing all that we can um, to, uh, to spread the gospel. So would you bow your heads? I'm just going to pray over you because this is a spiritual thing that we do right now. It's not just a practical thing. It's a spiritual thing. We need God's help. So, Lord, I just pray right now that you would flow in and, and through us as we make our commitments. Lord, we want to honor you with every part of our life certainly with our finances, Lord. And as we give to missions, I pray, Lord, that you would spur us on. We need your help with us. I pray blessing over our missionaries that the money that they receive, they would put to good work. Lord, they would make sure to make the very most of every cent, Lord, that the gospel would be spread effectively. And Lord, I pray for each person that gives, that you would bless their lives. Or that as you've promised, that it would, it would come back in, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And Lord, I pray is some of these uh, gifts are going to be given sacrificially. Lord, it's money that uh, is, is represented in a way that they, they don't even have it yet. They're just saying, God, as you provide, we're going to give. Lord, if, if they're stepping out in faith like that, would you just step in and show them you are right there with them, that you honor those who give, that you reward cheerful givers. We thank you for all those promises of your word. Lord, and I pray even for those who might be in the, in the room right now and they're Lord, they're feeling the desire to give, but they just, they just don't feel like the resource is there, and they're hesitating. Lord, I just pray that you would comfort uh, them as they struggle and they wrestle with this. Would you bring them to a place, even if it's not in this moment, maybe over the upcoming weeks, bring them to a place where they're ready to step out in faith and do what you call them to do. And Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for all the help that you give us in doing these, these difficult things, Lord. And I pray your blessing over every person today, even as our, as our gathering comes to a close, that you would help us to leave in the victory of God. In every situation of our life, every challenge that we face, Lord, we run to you. Lord, we look to you for our help. And we thank you knowing that you're always with us. And we prayed in your awesome name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Church, thank you for being here today. I hope you have a fantastic week. I'm looking forward to next week. We are going to be starting our Easter series, The Road. It's going to be uh, next Sunday. It's going to be good. So I hope to see you back then. God bless.